So what is a Day Out of Days report? It is a unique report to film scheduling that tells you what element, usually a cast member, is needed on which day in a simple graph-like interface. Now, before I show you how to generate a Day Out of Days report, let me show you what one looks like. This is a Day Out of Days report for an 18-day shoot. On the left, you will see a list of cast members for the production. In this column, you will see the total days worked. And here, the total days held. And I will explain what a hold means for a cast member in a minute. The days for the shooting schedule begin here with day one. The abbreviation SW stands for start work. The next day here for this cast member is a W, which stands for work. So these four days are all work days. So day one through day five tells you that this cast member, Barney, is scheduled for the first five days of production. Notice here, on the sixth of the month, it is a day off, signified by the gray box. Any day that is an off day is not considered a shoot day. So day six of the production lands on Monday, the seventh of the month. Now here, it shows an H. An H stands for hold, which means that Barney is not needed for that day, but according to SAG rules, he must be paid because he is held. The next shoot day, day seven, Barney is back to work, signified by this W. And lastly, day eight, you will see a WF, which stands for work finish. This is the last day the cast member Barney is needed for this production. So how is a day out of days report even created? You can't run this report until you have completed your schedule, which includes scheduling your scenes on the strip board. So let me show you why Barney's schedule on the day out of days report displays an SW, a W for these four days, an H for the whole day, and resumes work here and again here. Before I go to the strip board, notice that Barney's ID is one. This is important. If I go to the strip board for this schedule, and I also bring up the day out of days report so I can see them side by side, Let's look at the first five days. You should be aware that these numbers here on the strip board are board IDs, which relate to the cast member. How can you tell that? If you select the strip board print design option from the edit pull down menu, this is where you can customize the look of your board. Notice that board IDs down here is selected and will appear on the board in row B8, which is right here in the strip sample. To make it really clear, I'm going to create a label here in A8 called Board ID. Notice that in A8 there is the location, but we don't need that for this tutorial. So I'll give you a quick strip design tip here. Click Labels, go to A8, and enter Board IDs. Close the strip design window to go back to the strip board. Click OK to make the changes. And notice that we can now see the label board IDs for all the cast members and the board ID right underneath it. Real quick, the synopsis of the scene in some of the strips merges with this. So to remedy this, I'm going to go back to the strip print design, scroll down, to the bottom and change synopsis word length to seven for seven words. And there, that looks much better. Okay, so now let's take a look at the first five days on the strip board. What we're doing here is looking for board ID one, which is Barney. Scene one has board ID one and two, which means that Barney is needed for scene one. So is cast member board ID 2, 
which as you can see here on the board legend on the left, is cast member Amanda. On the Day Out of Days report, notice that both Barney and Amanda start work on this day, signified by an SW. Let's look at the second day on the board. Three scenes are scheduled here, and we need ID 3 for scenes 3 and 5, and ID 1 for scene 4, so Barney is needed again for the second shoot day. Let's look at the Day Out of Days report, and sure enough, Barney, ID 1, is signified here with a W. And take a look at ID 3, Chubby. He starts work here with an SW. Amanda, ID 2, is signified here with an H for hold, because according to the strip board, she is not scheduled for any of the scenes. Moving on to the next three shoot days, notice that ID 1 is on the board for all three shoot days. Why? Because Barney is in one or more of the scenes that are scheduled on these days. But let's go now to day six. Barney, again ID 1, is not here. Amanda, ID 2, is. On the day out of day's report, notice that ID 1 is held and Amanda has a W. She is working. So real quick, what is a hold? A hold means that you are holding the cast member and paying them even though they are not working. According to SAG rules, you can hold an actor for 10 or sometimes 14 days. If they are not needed for 10 days or more, you can drop them and then pick them up later on in the schedule. Check with SAG to see what the hold and drop rules are for your particular production. Let me show you now a drop example, here with the cast member The Bellman, ID 7. On the Day Out of Days report, ID 7 has an SWD on Day 8. This means that this cast member starts work on this day, but is immediately dropped because they are 10 days before the scheduler requires him to work again on Day 18, signified here with PWF, which stands for Pick Up, Work, Finish. To set your hold drop settings, go to the detail record for that element. So let's go to this cast member, the Bellman. To do that, select the Elements button on the toolbar of the breakdown sheet screen, select Cast Members, and then select the Bellman. Notice here that this cast member is needed for these two scenes, 19 and 30. The first scheduled on the 9th and the second on the 20th, which, as you can see, is more than 10 days apart. Here on the right are the day out of days preferences for this element. And each element has its own settings, so what you enter here for days held before drop only pertains to this cast member. So again, notice that it is shown that if there are 10 consecutive days that this cast member is not needed on the set, that this person can be dropped after the first workday and then picked up when they are needed 10 or more days later. Looking once again at the report, notice that the bellman starts work on the 9th, then is dropped, and then is picked up here on the 20th. Another thing to know is that a cast member can only be dropped once during the schedule. So if there are two instances of a cast member being dropped, you can select which one to use, the first drop or the second drop. And that is specified here. I hope this tutorial helped you understand the ins and outs of the Day Out of Days report. That wraps it up. Have a great shoot.